Bobby, obviously you've been doing this for a long time. You've had a lot of wins, but I mean, you know, enemy territory, Madison Square Garden. Is this is this a big one for you? Yeah, yeah. Muhammad Ali was here. You know, it's a it's a blessing and an honor to walk in his footsteps. He's my favorite boxer. You know, um, I've mimicked him for so long, his jab, and so it's an honor. And first of all, I want to thank you. You know, you've been here for so many years, and you've given me so much love. You know, when guys like uh, Sure Dog were put me down. You were pulling me up, so I really appreciate you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. So talk about tonight. Did you, I mean, it felt like you were going in there with a chip on your shoulder. You know, that, that comment that he made, it, 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 did it really upset you, or do you kind of, like, grasp on to something to, like, maybe give you a little extra motivation? Um, yeah, it upset me a little bit, you know, because I'm, I'm living in the real world. I'm not going to say anything that I'm not really going to do. Like, I don't make predictions, you know. Um, living in the real world and knowing what you say and what you have to back up behind that, you know. And sometimes those words will bite you in the ass. Like Connor said, I'm going to put the guy on a stretcher. And then he ended up leaving on the stretcher. He said it's going to be a flawless victory. Well, I didn't get touched. Yeah. It's kind of like you got to watch what you say. Yeah. How early did you know? Because as you said, you didn't get touched and you were landing. It seemed like you were dialed in right away. How early did you know, like, oh, I've, I've got this one? Um... You think you know until, oh, you didn't know, and, and you're on the canvas. I just stayed sharp, stayed ready, made sure I was moving and avoiding those shots. Anytime he kept coming into my gap, making sure he, he eats something, all the things that my coach told me to do. You've been in this game so long, but it seems like you're getting better, like every time out there at this point in your career. I mean, what do you attribute that to, that you've, you've been around so long, yet it seems like you, you're, you know, you're not going downhill at all, you're getting better. You hear that, EI? You hear that? They keep saying I get better. When it's just me and that guy right there. It's just me, him, and we have another amateur. There's three guys that I train with. And when one of them missed practice, I only got one of them. I got three guys in my gym. That's who all I train with. And I raise like, well, did he join a new camp? Did he do something new? No, it's three of us, you know? And one of my guys is getting ready to have his debut. One of my guys is getting ready to have his pro debut. I'm not even working with great, like, great artists, you know? Yeah. It's just me and these guys, and we put it together. We work hard. And I explained to him, you know, as long as you're working hard and you're putting the right work in, we are Coach Sam Mason, he's a, he's a genius on the feet. He's a genius. And so that's all I need. Nice. It seems like if you do this moving forward, this might be a way to avoid the uh, issues with the judges. You just, just knock everybody out. It might be easier. It sounds great. It sounds great. But sometimes they just won't go down. You know, like Michael Myers, he just won't stay dead. Nice. Uh, last thing for me, obviously, like you said, you got out untouched. Um, I know you got a lot of miles to feed. I mean, are you looking to book a fight again quickly? Do you want to take off the holidays? What's the plan? So my thing was I kind of felt a little bad taste from the Raphael fight. I felt like whoever that judge was kind of screwed me. And I wanted to prove to, to Raphael that I ran circles on him. I doubled his numbers in the fight. And a matter of fact, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to fight another fight on the same card as you. But then I found out there was an Anaheim card. I was like, man, I would love to go jump back on that one in California and bring some of my fans, you know. So if Dana and, and Sean Shelby hears it, I would love to be on the Anaheim card next month. Shoot me on and I'm down. Bobby, over here. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, as, as John was saying, uh, with, just, with your knockouts rather than going to the judges, your last knockout victory was eight years ago today against James Krause. So what is it about November 6th uh, that <laughs> leads to knockouts? Holy crap, man, that's, that's interesting. Um, I guess time repeats itself like that, I guess. Um, I don't know, people are like, why don't you knock him out? Why don't you knock him out? I just fight the fight, guys, I'm an artist. I paint a painting, if you didn't like the, the painting, I'm sorry, but this one is a, a classic, you know? Um, I just paint paintings. Then the, the, the ceremonial weigh-ins, you came in, I believe it was like clown makeup or something like that. What led you to put that on before stepping onto the scale? Well, we're in New York, you know? And, and I'm the real joker, you know. Um, there's fictional stuff, you know, but I'm the real one, you know. I've lost, I didn't have a mom, I didn't have a dad. Um, I saw all my friends have all the things that I wanted, you know. I saw all the cool kids get everything I didn't get. I lived on couches, I ate their crumbs, I got their hand-me-downs. You know, I was raised by my grandmother, she died, and then I went into foster care, I was in 50 different homes. Like, I really lived a dark life. I was me and my little brother is all I had, and my little brother got killed. And so it's just a dark path. Like if, um, the UFC just put out my uh, UFC origins, and they kind of tell a little bit about the story. But I just feel like I'm the, the real-life joker. And here I am in New York City, 
So, hey, I brought the Joker out. And then right after the, the performance, you started talking to the camera, and then it cut the audio and it went to a commercial. So we didn't... Oh, we, what? Yeah, so I wanted to give you this opportunity to say... Well, like, Those well, jacks? <laughs> Those jacks screw me like that? Oh, wow. So what were you saying if I you want to... I was spitting that fire, too. <laughs> no, I was just trying to explain to people, like, my whole goal is to... Uh, inspire, you know, motivate. Like, I want the, the average Joe, you know. Um, basically, because like, I come from foster care, I lived in 50 different homes. And I, one thing I noticed is that the average person, just like you, and you go home, maybe it's something that's not right in your life. And you go, man, I just wish, I wish I had a girl. I wish I had the woman of my dreams. I wish I was more in shape. I wish I was more of this. Everyone's unhappy. You know, we deal with this depression thing. And I just want to try to inspire people motivate them, tell them that you, you can do it. I was that guy. I was that guy that, was, that watched everybody get, like, I remember going for prom king and I lost prom king. I remember going to this and losing that, you know? I remember being in foster care and wanting a gift and my, my little brother got the gift I wanted. Like, I always came in second. So at the end of the day, like, I, I worked so hard to be here and anyone can do it, you know? Just one day at a time, putting your, your mind to it, you can do it. Hey, Bobby, what's the vibe in the locker room right now? Because all you guys on the prelims have been lighting it up. I haven't been locked to the locker room to see, bro. I haven't been to the locker room, and they kick you out before you can go back. So, But, hey, Ian kicked it off first. His name Ian Gar Gary. He was back there. He was playing some soulful music. Me and him were dancing. We are just getting in the groove. And then, next, you know, he got out. And then, next, you know, I kicked my music on. I brought a little more hip-hop. And I was grooving. We've been doing our thing back there. We were having a great time. It was a party in the back. I know, obviously, this is a theme of the night. But bonuses, is there anything you want to say to Dana and all that to make the case on a night like tonight? Man, everybody's hitting tonight. The night that I hit, everybody's hitting. I'm like... Oh, it's going to be a long night. You know, hopefully he gets more than one bonus, you know, because this is the thing I'll tell him, I want to tell him, is we've been giving 50000 away for 25 years plus. You ain't never heard of inflation? <laughs> you know, it's not the same 50 anymore, you know, it's not the same 50, but don't get me wrong, I love it. Come on now, shoot at least shoot us some more then, you know? He didn't come in the back in the room. I think because all the guys were like, hey, hey, we're going to ask him. Hey, we're going to ask him. We're going to ask him. Yeah, and then they sent Sean, and Sean's like, oh. And we just start pressing him. Hey, hey, hey. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, guys. Congrats on the windows. Appreciate you, bro.